Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and today I'm going to continue on the rust repair on the Beetle. Guys, so you saw me do the A pillar rush repair on the passenger side of the Beetle uh, in the last few weeks, and today I'm going to get stuck into the driver's door repair. The passenger door is actually really good. Um, I was worried it was pretty dodgy when I first got it, but I've since gone into it, and as you might have previously seen, it's um, it's actually in reasonable condition. It's just this door here has got a lot of rust along this lower edge here, and uh, I know there is rust around this corner here, so. That's my uh, focus to start with today and see how far we go on that. And uh, anyway, first thing to do is to strip this door down and um, grind it all back and see what we're working with. Okay, so now I'll run you through my discoveries. Uh, basically, I want to repair this whole patch along here. It actually doesn't seem to have much rust at all on the bottom edge. It's all on this face, which is quite odd. Maybe the door was left uh, lying down at uh, some stage and the water's sort of gathered along there and just rusted out that section. I'm gonna to have to go inside and rust treat uh, all down in behind here because obviously it's still got surface rust under there. I'm going to get in with a wire, handheld wire brush and treat it. But for starters, let's cut this whole strip out and, um, and then make a piece to match. I don't need to make a crazy template now because it's pretty much just gonna be a straight replacement piece. So um, let's start cutting. So I don't have a press break and I use my usual trick of two pieces of angle iron together and that um, works quite well to uh, bend my curves and you sort of see there's, there's a bit of a, a tight curve at the top and it comes down to these uh, sort of flatter curves down the bottom. You can see it's all completely rusted out in the back of this. So I've uh, replicated that quite reasonably with my other piece, you know, depending on where I sit this and uh, that's good enough for now. And I made the piece a lot bigger than I needed, a lot broader, because it's much easier to bend a bigger area than it is if I just left that tiny lip and tried to bend that by hand. That would have been really rough going. So uh, now it's a matter of just uh, trial fitting, trim fit, trim fit, until, it, um, until it's just the right shape I want, and, um, and then I can weld it in. Alright, that has come up pretty good. It actually is now quite a nice, uh, a nice fit down in this uh, bottom corner down here. While I've got it out, what I'm going to do next is going to go through with 
just a wire brush in behind and get off as much of the surface rust and stuff as I can and then give it a bit of a, uh, a treatment, paint it with some rust proof primer and then uh, I'll probably use some cavity spray wax in there just so that it uh, it lasts as long as it can before it uh, actually tries to rust again. Okay, so now let's get into stopping the remaining rust from going any further. Alright, so the inside is all welded, grinded, repaired, but of course that work on the back, uh, particularly on the back corner of this door, uh, exposed the damage that's on the front of this door and uh, how sort of there's been a dodgy repair here before and all the, um, the body filler bu bubbled up and came off. So now I'm going to get on, onto it with the uh, wire wheel and the grinder and take it all back down and just see what is there and uh, then work out how to fix it. Okay, this is what I'm dealing with here. So this piece I just cut out and you can see it's had some previous uh, repairs done. Looks like somebody welded it with a potato. So that's uh, not exactly the way it should look. So I've cut it out back to beyond the damage and um, there's a bit of extra rust here in this corner so I'm going to just uh, weld up all these bits and then weld in a new sheet and um, it should hopefully look a lot better than this rubbish. Alright, that is looking much better. So that's a nice fit for that uh, new piece in there now. So now it's time to weld it all in. Now that outside is looking really nice, inside is looking pretty decent and all the way along here. So now it's time for a coat of light coat of filler and uh, sand it down and that should be me done for the day. So now it's just a coat of primer and then uh, put it all back together for now. Alright, I have a pretty ugly patch on the door now, but I don't have any more rust in it. So that is another job marked off the books and uh, I can move forward. So, um, all right, well, that's it for today. So that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff.
guys. The very first Volkswagen to land in Australia was a Kubelswagen from the then British run factory in Wolfsburg in 1946. It was to be evaluated for local conditions by the Australian Army and that same vehicle is still on display at the War Memorial in Canberra. The first two Beatles to arrive were in 1946. They were assigned to the Department of Post-War Reconstruction along with a large supply of spare parts. One of the two vehicles had the four-wheel drive drivetrain of the Kubelwagens. Alright, so we're getting there, finally. The doors are now both rust-free. The, um, there's still a little bit of rust underneath the battery tray and a little bit in the back that I've still got to tackle, but the car is looking really good. It is really getting there body-wise. And um, yeah, so uh, anyway, uh, as always, if you want to help the channel out, just uh, head down to the link in the description. You can get some cool shirts, hoodies, and coffee mugs. And um, please like and subscribe to Homebuilt by Jeff. And you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at the same place. See you guys. Warm and warm and warm as a mouthful. Warm and warm. Oh, okay, it's good to know because I don't know what I'm doing. Memorial. Play at the War Memorial in Canberra. <laughs> <laughs> War Memorial. No, it's a. It's a it doesn't make sense what you've written. Oh.